Welcome back to Casey's Backyard Barbecue. Today we're gonna to be doing an entire spare rib. I'm gonna show you how we like to use every little piece of it and the cuts that we like the best. Here we go. We got ourselves a full rack of spare ribs. Now, a reason I like to go with this cut is because a lot of times you get the St. Louis cut, which is also included in here, but you get all this extra meat. And one of the things that we're gonna be working on today is to make sure that we're gonna be utilizing all of this different meat in here. So let's get cut into it and get started. Barely fits on my cutting board. I'm gonna go ahead and start with this little extra flaps that we have here. These are not gonna be, uh, be cutting off good, so I'm just gonna square these off right there. Next thing I like to do, separate out the St. Louis cut here. Now, a lot of times when you get a St. Louis cut, they'll include this section up here. And if you ever have those rack of ribs, that there's parts of it that have a bone and there's parts of it that have that little bit of cartilage. I'm actually gonna be cutting right in between the bone and the cartilage area here to get exactly that bone to bone bite of ribs that we got out of here. And that's exactly what we're looking for right there. It's hard to see, but there's the bone sticking out right at that point. All the cartilage bits are up in this top point. what would traditionally be known as the St. Louis cut. On this section up here, when it comes down to this cut, there's not a lot of bone and cartilage structure up here, so this is a cut of pork right there. What I'm gonna be trying to do here is slice this, so above the where that cartilage points are, and get just this part up on this top bit. So now we have this almost like a mock tenderloin almost kind of a situation here. What I'm doing right now is I'm just gonna try to separate this right along this fat seam exactly like that. And that's what I'm looking for. We're gonna smoke this up and it all, almost turns into like a pork jerky. The rest of the section that we have in the back here, but we're gonna chop these down and basically square them off. And uh, this is what my son likes to call pork chicken nuggies. We're just gonna pick them into little strips here, try to keep them fairly consistent and any little extra bits of fat that are just hanging off like this. We'll just go ahead and trim those up because all it's going to be is just a big fatty bite. And over on this side, we're starting to get quite, quite thin. So I'm actually going to slice this right around here. I'm going to do another one of those jerky style pieces, just like that. And there are essentially what will be our pork chicken nuggies, obviously just pork. All right, now to tackle this top section. There's a bunch of bones in here. And this is where it gets a little bit weird because the bones start to come from this angle and they start to do this right at this point. And if I reach in here, I can almost feel, and I could probably pull one out because it's not gonna be a good cut. But you have these like cartilage bones that run across this seam, just like that. And that right there is actually a piece of cartilage that I just cut through. But that's where these pieces, these cuts here get a little bit strange. Still really good, great rib meat, but I'll show you what I like to do with these. I do about every third and we'll just follow the bone around. And I cut these into like these little tiny like riblet pieces. But having it separate in this like little riblet patty, it gives us the opportunity to know, okay, that's one of those ones we're gonna have to pull that cartilage out. I'm gonna continue that up until I hit this giant bone structure right here. Now we got the underside of this top part here, which I always, kind of describe as the most awkward cut of a full spare rib because there's just so many different bone structures going all different ways. We got a giant bone right here. We also have bones going this way. We also have cartilage going this way. And since we still have that silver skin here on the back, I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a paper towel, try to get as much of this off as I can. Another one of those pork chicken nuggies. Now this piece right here, super awkward. Lots of good meat on here. Once again, this giant bone that runs all the course of this. That's bone right there. So it's like, there's nothing here to even salvage. So I'm gonna try to peel this meat on the top of this out. This cut of meat is delicious. Just letting the bone sort of guide me. Those are gonna turn into those pork chicken nuggies once again. Now, anything we got left here, I'm gonna cook this one up the exact same way we do our riblets. All right, now we got that St. Louis cut. We're taking off that silver skin. I'm gonna start in the middle, utilizing a butter knife to not cut it, but I'm just riding the bone a little bit. 
And of course, sometimes one stripe, you get it. Today we didn't. And that should be good right there. And there we have it. That's how I like to butcher up my spare ribs. So we have ourselves the St. Louis cut, very classic. Got two pieces of what's gonna become sort of per pork jerky. We have our fillets of the top bits of the cartilage pieces of meat, pile of chicken nuggies, and what I like to call the strange one. For our rubs today, we're gonna to be hitting it with uh, just granulated black pepper, one part of kosher salt, and then our self-smoked paprika. And about half a portion of that, not too much. And since it's a nice hot day, we're not gonna need any binders. We're just gonna hit them pretty heavy on all sides here. Get all sides nice and coated. And we'll do the same for all these other pieces as well. All right, and that's looking pretty good to me. So let's go ahead and get our pit fired up. And today we're gonna to be hitting it with our old standby hickory wood. Now it's time to get these on the pit. We got this thing preheated up to 250 degrees, pretty standard. For our uh, bites and our things that we're gonna be turning into jerky, you're gonna be putting them in, in this little wire rack on the top rack here. For our pork ribs, the St. Louis cut, we're gonna place right here on this portion of the grill. Fatty your side towards this side here. Our other pieces in the same middle portion of the pit here. Now you'll hear a lot, the three, two, one method and it, your ribs might work out to be three, two, one. But I have to say, that's one of those things that it's not about the time, it's about the look. So if you have a good look to them, what we're gonna be looking for on the ribs, is they start to break apart before we get to the wrap portion. The little bites, they're gonna be coming off a lot earlier. And you'll notice we'll be checking on them probably in about an hour or so. Those strips will start to really dry out. I'll probably give them one flip and those are just gonna be ready to go. Those are gonna cook really rapidly, really, really fast. And they're gonna be like that mid grill sort of a nice little bite. So here we go, 250 degrees for the first portion of the cook. All right, it's been about an hour and a half on the smoker now. Let's take a look at our progress so far. We're already getting a ton of pullback on those bones right there. Gonna take a look at the stuff we've got up top here. And uh, these are starting to really get into their, their kind of like jerky phase. Let's take a look at what we got here for our little riblet bites. Looking pretty good. Got a lot of good smoke flavor in there. And I think these guys are probably ready to come off and get wrapped for the next phase to get them nice and tender. Let's just take the small one here. Not very tender, but as you can see, we did get all the way through. Mm -hmm. It's very good though. I mean, it's good smoke flavor and uh, that's gonna be just about where we want these to be before we put them in to uh, wrap them up and get them nice and soft. This one's not too complicated. We're just gonna make a little pouch for them and then we're gonna hit them with just a little sprinkle of light brown sugar. And that's gonna go right back here on the pit. I'll go ahead and move these guys. I'm gonna say these guys need maybe a half hour more and they're gonna be good to go. All right, now we're gonna move our ribs around just a little bit. And from this point on, it's got a couple of little tricks that we're gonna be using. Number one, we've been doing it about 225 to 240 degrees for the first hour and a half of this cook. But now it's time we can crank up our temperatures quite a bit. And since these are our uh, complete bone to bone, I'm actually gonna do a little trick that I saw somebody pick up. So I'm actually gonna push on the pork around the bones just a little bit to kind of help with that separation and that pullback. Just kind of get a little separation to see if we can help it pull that meat back off the bone quite a bit. And now we're gonna raise our temps up a little bit. I'm gonna be doing that by adding a bit more charcoal to our fire here. Our goal temp is now between 250 and 275. And it's a little bit of a dirty job, but somebody's gotta do it. And we're gonna leave that jerky bits on there for about another half hour that I'm gonna pull those off. We'll probably just take a bite of them too. They're, they're pretty much good to go right now. Uh, and then we're gonna be, not so much on time, but we're gonna be looking from now on the pullback on the ribs and seeing when they get to that point when you, when they bend, they just kind of crack just a little bit. And that's when we'll know we'll be ready for the wrap portion of it. 30 more minutes and it's about time to take off our little sort of jerky strips here. Let's take a look at what we got. And this is where we get our little thin slices of almost pork jerky. It's got a very jerky flavor, a little crispy, but it's very, very good. Little mid-grill snack, one for the one for the barbecuer. Hmm, pretty good though. All right, we've been chilling. 
uh, about three and a half hours on here. And let's take a look at what we got for our ribs. So I'm looking right now and I'm seeing that we're having a pretty decent bone pullback on this one side. But the big trick is, is when you pull it like this and you start to see these little cracks, that's when you know it's time to wrap. It's time to wrap these up. So let's get them wrapped. And for our main rack of ribs, what I'm gonna do is lay down a bed of the light brown sugar. Not too heavy, because we don't want it to be like a syrup, but we want to add that flavor to it. Possibly a little bit of moisture uh, to kind of trap that in there as the sugars start to render together. We don't want it to burn, just a nice little bed. Got that nice pliableness to it. We're gonna lay them top side down, right like that. And you can see a lot of that bone pullback that we're getting right here. That's gonna make it, that's when you know it's gonna get super tender. And that's it, just one side on the ribs and get these guys wrapped up. We're going to double wrap it and we'll do that by flipping it now this time. So now the front side's up. Wrap that again, again, nice and tight. You don't want any leakage. And we wanna get a nice solid seal, get that fully going. Then we're gonna treat these exactly the same way on a wrap. All I'm gonna do is hit them with just one side, just a little bit of brown sugar. That's gonna be about all we need for each one of the riblets. And we're gonna wrap this up nice and tight. Now we're gonna put these a little bit on the hotter side here. We're gonna be rocking our temps about 275 degrees, probably about another two hours and they'll be nice and tender. Uh, we're gonna be looking for them to probe around 201 degrees. All right, it's been about another hour and a half and we are, I just checked the temperature, we're just hitting our 201. So now it's time to unwrap these bad boys. Oh yeah, look at that. It's gonna be like pork born ends right there. And now for the main rack of ribs. Now, if you remember correctly, we had this turned around. So basically this is up and then when I flip it, it'll be down. So now what I do is when I turn this, oh, first of all, let's just take a, take a gander at that. Oh my goodness, look at that bone pullback. This one's nearly falling out. That is gonna be so unbelievably tender. And that is exactly what we're looking for. So the reason I do it this way, because now that I unwrapped it and flipped it once, now I can flip it back over onto the grill fairly easily. Bones on both edge and nice, beautiful pullback. All right, and then for our very last step, we're just gonna get a little sprinkle of brown sugar across the top of each one of these. And we're gonna hit it with our barbecue sauce, which today we're just gonna use straight Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. We're just gonna brush that on right like this. Just like that. That full coverage of barbecue sauce on there. And we're gonna hit it with one last bout of our wood chips here just to get a little bit of smoke flavor on our barbecue. About 10 to 15 minutes, those ribs are gonna be ready to eat. These have just come in off the smoker. That barbecue sauce has gotten nice and tacky and they are looking and smelling fantastic. That is the nice glazed rib cooked all the way through. Now it's time to try out our rib. Mmm. I think we've absolutely nailed it. Mmm. That is so good. Now let's take a look at those little, what my son calls, pork chicken nuggies. And they're cooked all the way through, very smoked, not surprising, they're very small cuts of meat. Profile that our son enjoys, so give one of those a shot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tender all the way through. Great mouthfeel too. Mmm. And there you have it, folks. That is a way to take the entirety of that pork spare rib, utilize every little piece. Every part comes out as a very, very tasty morsel. We have our St. Louis cut here. This is the uh, top portion of the St. Louis cut that has in kind of a strange, but still very tasty rib bite. And we have the uh, pork chicken nuggies, which is from any piece that didn't have any cartilage or bone in it. We chopped them up. They kind of taste like a little bit of like pork burn ends. But there you go. Everything went to use. Everything's gonna have a use. And for the price per pound, you're getting so much less with this too. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Give it a shot at home. Let me know what you think.